Hi everyone! I'm here to tell you about my amazing trip to Nunavik, known as the Great Land in Inukutuk. This place has been a dream of mine to visit. It's only been about 13,000 people for the population, but the area is larger than France. I was so nervous to go just because I've never been up north before. It's very cold and I'm scared of the cold. Also, I was here to pack for about three weeks worth of food because I'd heard about how ridiculous the prices of food are up north. So I put everything I could possibly fit into my suitcase for three entire weeks. I also went in January, so it was freezing. The Inuit people, they have done this for so many years. Perhaps I can learn a little bit of wisdom from them when I visit. To get there, it was not an easy feat. I had to fly from Montreal to Kujuak, and then from there board a charter flight and go to Kangrasuk, which is my first location, and it's a town of less than 600 people. When we landed there, it was a big blizzard and the entire town shut down because it was so harsh that nobody could go anywhere. I was crazy enough to take a walk around the town and by the time I was done filming, I could not even feel my hands. Another big surprise I had was that I couldn't flush my toilet. The sewage system there is taken out by trucks and that is also how our water gets supplied. So every house has what I call a traffic light, red, yellow and green. But what this means is that the red is when you have a lot of sewage backup and you can no longer get fresh water. And the green is when everything is okay. Our next trip was to Kwaktak. And that is a place where a very famous singer called Beatrice Deer. Now this is a town of about 450 people and I've really got to soak in the Inuit culture there. The highlight of this trip was I was invited towards a beluga whale feast. It is raw beluga whale that they fish out of the water and then they cut. It's all sitting around in someone's kitchen with the cardboard box and had these raw pieces of whale and you're just eating the skin. How does it taste like? Squid, like very overcooked, super chewy squid, but oily, almost like butter, but fish oil. It's a bit hard to describe. I won't say it's for the uninitiated, but it has sustained people for centuries. And if it worked for them in these really harsh conditions, I'm sure it can work for me. They also had some bannock and some caribou meat, and they called it dessert, but it's actually this fish fat that they mix with frozen berries. Kujuak is about 2,500 people and it's called the meeting place. I got to see the beautiful shoreline where the ships used to come and do their trading. I went to this cool art gallery, it's called TV, and I got these really beautiful earrings that are made from seal skin and are hand beaded. After that, I went to my last stop, it's called Kujuapik. To get there, I flew to Perinitik, to Inujuak, before getting to a final destination. I got to the airport like 7.30 in the morning and it landed about 4.00. I didn't know that the airplane was not heated. Everyone else was wearing snow pants and I was wearing my sweatpants. By the time I got off the plane, I realized I couldn't even feel um, above my knees and my legs had completely changed color. Like they had started to turn this dusky kind of bluish gray and it had this texture on my skin which medically is called levito reticularis. However, Kujuapik is one of the highlights of my trip. The central point of attraction is the Inukshuk. A lady was kind enough to bring me by her ski doo to see this really beautiful place. It's been a trip of a lifetime. Even though I went to such a remote area, it was dark. I had maybe five and a half hours at most of sunlight. It was super cold, reaching way below 42 degrees Celsius. And there weren't many people. There were communities of a few hundred to a few thousand. I didn't even see a traffic light the whole time I was there. And yet the people are so warm. They welcome you as one of their own. And I found community, partly just because you just need community to survive. As someone who has only ever lived in the city, I forget that because we are so full of our own comfort zones. We hide beneath this contactless shell. I've really learned to slow down. I learned to reach out to have genuine relationships with people and that was the most important takeaway from this whole trip. So that is it and I'll see you next time!